Next up are three family members from Mid Wales. Richard Davis, his wife Samantha, and her son Tommy Lads, who are all sticking to the water. Cheers. Cheers. For now, at least. We haven't had any of our pollock today. Today we're going to be on the straight and narrow. They think they've come up with a slightly more interesting drink than H2O to delight the dragons. This is a one-of-its-kind business. We are the only people in the world to do this. I reckon that sparkling plum wine. Three words I really like there. I think there's got to be a twist to it. No alcohol. It better not be. Good luck. It's something new and everyone wants to try something new. So it's got potential to really blow up. Borodar dragons. My name is Richard Davis and this is my stepson Tommy Lads. And we are asking for a £50,000 investment for a 15% stake in the company. We're here today to introduce you to Gaz and Drinks, the delicious cocktail in one bottle. It is a fizz infused with fruit gins and we do it in three flavours. A slow, a plum and a raspberry. By combining two of the nation's favourite drinks, we've created a premium cocktail for all occasions. With your investment, we'd be looking to use this towards funding a bottling plant so we get the maximum quality each time. Anyway, enough of this. Who would like a cocktail? Oh, Me. Yes, please. <laughs> now, this is my wife, Sam, and she's going to bring around a slowgasm first. A what? A slowgasm. Oh, oh hello. <laughs> <laughs> Three types of cocktail in a bottle that combine Prosecco fizz and fruit gin is the offering from Richard Davis and his stepson, Tommy. Next time, if you just want to slip a bit more in, I'll hear that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, dragons. Cheers. Fifteen percent of the business is on the table in return for £50,000. I'm not sure it's a good idea down in all this before the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's possibly part of the ploy. <laughs> Sarah Davies has diligently assessed the full range of drinks on offer. I think you might be my favourite uh, pitch so far this series. And she's first to feed back on the fun fizz proposition. Well, guys, I'm happy to report that all three have fully passed the quality test, probably need a little bit more sampling just to be on the safe side, but uh, absolutely love them. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I would say, where's the idea come from? But I'm going to guess the fact that the Prosecco market's so big and the gin market's so big. But what's the journey been? We used to make slow gin and champagne. And at picnics and gatherings together, we used to make our own together. So you used to pour your slow gin into yeah. champagne? And for why can't it be put into one instead of carrying two bottles around? Right. So at the moment, then, you're working with a... Filler, a manufacturer. We're working with a subcontractor, effectively, so we give him the recipe and he then produces the product for us. And what does a bottle of this stuff retail for? The recommended retail price is £20. Tommy Richard, I like the drinks, I think they're really nice. But you can buy some really nice champagne, really nice quality champagne between £18 and £22 today. Yeah, but I think it's the first of its kind. It's the first time you've ever seen a fruit gin infused with a fizz in one bottle, which is where it's unique, because it's a very easy pop-and-go cocktail all in one go. The entrepreneurs suggest that the originality of the Prosecco Gin partnership justifies the punchy pricing of the product. And now the drink's saucy suffix has caught the attention of Stephen Bartlett. Gasm, an intensely pleasurable experience. <laughs> Talk to me about the inspiration behind the name. So, obviously, there's an old cocktail which is called Slowgasm. So we've taken to the end of it and called it Gasm Drinks and then decided that, actually, it's a really memorable, catchy name. I actually think the name is a little bit immature, if I'm honest. I think, especially when you're pricing yourself at that premium level, to call yourself Orgasm, let's be honest, that's what you've called yourself, takes away a little bit from the premium brand you're going to have to have to sell at that price point. That is not the way we look at it at all. We chose that name and in a dictionary, 
This is an intensely pleasurable experience. You can have trochogasm and whatever. It mm. doesn't have to be just that one. I think, I think you've got a word there that's compelling, but I don't think you've got a brand that's at all compelling. Even looking at the bottle, the bottle looks remarkably bland and forgettable. And then this, like, funny kind of immature word. I agree. You've actually got a product that tastes really good, but you really aren't telling the story. You know, you present it in a sort of very sedate bottle that really doesn't look in the slightest bit interesting. Although then you oddly, exactly as Stephen says, you then come up with a slightly quirky name. It kind of doesn't fit. The entrepreneur's branding misses its mark with two of the dragons who also suggest their product name isn't punching through. Sarah Davies now wants to find out a bit more about the pair's plans to expand. You said you want to use the investment for doing your own bottling plant. Yes. If we have a bottling plant, we can reduce the cost of bottle at least by a pound for each bottle. Is it all 50,000 for the bottling plant? No, the bottling plant in total is going to cost about half a million pounds to set up and install. Where's the rest of the money coming from? Uh, hopefully grant funding, as well as a loan, and also we're going to put some more money into the company as well. So how much more money are you putting in? We're going to put in another £50,000. So that's a half a million pounds to spend to save a pound on each bottle. <laughs> OK, I think I'm just going to have a bit more to drink. Richard and Tommy, let's just go back one stage. What's your sales at the moment? So the financial year ending in 2020, we had a turnover of £24,000 with a net loss of £100,000. Right, well, OK, now, what about 21? Uh, we had a revenue of £21,000 yep. with a net loss of £10,000. And then for predictions for the next three years? One more year. You might not last three years the way you're going, but tell me. So we're looking for a revenue of £108,000. Yeah. With a net loss of £51,000. Wow. I'm going to tell you something. I've been opening and closing factories for 47 years. I don't doubt your dream, but you're running before you walk in. You're making a movie without the script. If I was in your position, I'd want to increase my sales to about a quarter of a million constantly over two years. Then I know that I've got the confidence to go and invest a half a million pounds in a bottling plant. Today, it's not investable, I'm afraid. I'm going to say those words, and I'm out. A strong cautionary warning from manufacturing maestro Tuka Suleiman before he calls time on the deal. Is Peter Jones ready to boost the bubbles business? Tell me, Richard, I think you've got a really good idea. I think the product is really... I like the product a lot. I think it tastes really good. But I think that there's too many risks you're going to have to raise a bit of cash. You're going to have to look at putting a loan in. You're going to have to go and apply for a grant. There's so many things that you haven't got already teed up and done. So I think that this is way too early for investment at this point. So I'm going to say, sadly, I'm out. You've got a product here that every single dragon that tasted really, really loved it. However, you're going to need a rebrand you're going to need a better strategy for how you spend your capital, and then you're going to need help with sales because you're not there with your sales yet. I'm here to invest capital. I'm not here to recruit myself to be the CEO of your company. I'm not here for a full-time job. So as much as I love the product, it's not an investable business for me, and for that reason, I'm out. If I could get up again, I would get down on my knees there, and I would be begging you, do not build the bottling plant. I hope you survive, because I want to be drinking this. This is great, and I want to be a customer. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> Thank out. You. Thank you. Three more dragons depart, 
and the entrepreneurs are hearing loud and clear that their future plans need a rethink. Sarah Davies is their last hope for investment. She loved the drinks. Will she get the corks popping by proposing a partnership? This is a fabulous product. But you two are terrible business people. Because this is the worst business proposition I've heard since I've been in the den. You know, you are living in cuckoo land if you think the right next stage for this business to go from where you are now, losing hundreds of thousands of pounds with 20 grand a year turnover, to half a million investment in a bottling plant with loans and debt up to your eyeballs. I don't want you to make a mistake that you're going to have to then live with for the rest of your life trying to repay that money. I sincerely hope you succeed but I absolutely will not be putting my money where my mouth is going with this one. So good luck, but I'm out. Well, thank you thank very you much. much. And thank you all very much indeed. Thank you. Five no's and the fizz concept flops in the den. Richard and Tommy depart with nothing, but the entrepreneurs aren't feeling too flat themselves. Oh, well, not disastrous. They all enjoyed it. They had given great advice and we've learned something from it, so positive outcome. You look very James Bond with that uh, little cocktail glass. Shake a notch, Dad. <laughs> <laughs>